Hi there, Psycho Enthusiasts, and welcome to another episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Fomichev, and I'm a Psycho Technology MVP. Uh, it's going to be an interesting episode today. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to not get sued <laughs> when running your website on Sitecore. That's right. This actually goes back to the legacy of our favorite browser, Internet Explorer. Man, did I get excited about hearing um, Microsoft re release the news about it going away. However, one of the presents that IE decided to leave for us is the requirement for what's called a P3P protocol, um, platform for privacy preferences. Here we go, platform for privacy preferences. Uh, basically, that's a requirement. Uh, this is a protocol that's required for the FXM and therefore the uh, the cores and therefore the FXM to work on the Cycler platform. Now, as you can see. Internet Explorer 8, 9, 10, and 11 are the only ones that require this protocol to be included with the core's header. So it's a P, uh, uh, P3P uh, has to be included as a header in a compact format along with a course header for cross domain references uh, uh, JavaScript to work properly. Now, what does that have to do with being sued? Well, P3P specifies, um, uh, provides a description to the user agent, which is the browser, which is therefore uh, the website user, the description of how the personal data collected by the website is going to be used. Now you have different policies, tests, uh, you have uh, um, access uh, right descriptions, disputes uh, uh, elements describing even how the disputes will be handled if the company violates their privacy policy. Uh, remedies, how the uh, user will be compensated if their uh, privacy policy was violated by the service provider, by the website therefore. So purpose uh, uh, of, for collection of private information, uh, the recipients of the information collected, uh, the timing, categories, and uh, lots and lots of other information. So now I hope you can see how big of a can of worms this protocol is. And oh my god, I have no idea why Internet Explorer decided to include this. This is just a huge opportunity for a lot of lawsuits. I'm so glad that none of the other browsers uh, went for it. So no longer your privacy policy is sufficient for the Internet Explorer. For the use of FXM and Core's um, really cross-domain uh, JavaScript requests, so you have to pass P3P header specifying all this information accurately um, to the Internet Ex uh, Explorer users. Um, in this case, it's versions 8, 9, 10, 11. Hopefully, uh, you know, you, you don't have to concern yourself with 8 and 9, otherwise you're work, working on a wrong project. Um, 10 and 11, really, uh, is what we have to be concerned with. Uh, why? Well, the P3P header turns out to be a legally binding agreement between the service provider and the website user. So you can't just simply go ahead and throw in whatever you want in that P3P header uh, in Sitecore and just hope for the best. That is a legal binding, legal agreement between um, the website provider, the company, uh, uh, the, the provider of the website, basically, right, and, and the user, the visitor of the website. And the user can use this, the information provided. Um, in that header against the company if their privacy policy specified by the P3P header has been violated. So, as you can see, with uh, the amount of uh, headers specified in, um, in the protocol and the seriousness of the situation, this could really become a can of worms. And, and it's not as easy as just throwing it together by looking at the spec. Um, you know, you, you can read through the spec here on the uh, uh, w3.org website and, and sort of get an understanding of the meaning, but I'm sure there are so many loopholes and just legal exceptions and rules and just definitions and interpretations of a lot of this uh, language. So definitely, definitely a lot of room for error, a lot of room for uh, lawsuits. So 
Now let's take a look what Cycro comes with. So by default, Cycro FXM configuration comes with the following setting, which is a compact representation of the P3P uh, agreement. Now remember, this is a binding agreement. Now, Sitecore being very thoughtful, they've included a warning message here saying uh, an appropriate value is provided by default. An appropriate value is provided by default. That means this value, and we'll take a look at the interpretation of this here in a second, is perhaps one of the at least binding ones, uh, so to speak. However, that doesn't mean that you can just throw it on your website, right? And we'll actually, we'll take a uh, look in a second why. Um, and here uh, uh, later they say, though there are potentially legal consequences attached to P3P values, so Sycor advises customers to carefully consider the P3P value for their business. Thanks, Sycor. Uh, now I hope all the developers and all the architects, um, anyone who works in, uh, and builds Sycor websites is aware of this message and uh, um, hopefully they watch this video and understand the seriousness of the situation um, and instead of simply throwing this on the website this would perhaps have to go through some sort of a legal review I would say to make sure that um, this goes along uh, with the the actual the company privacy policy so well let's take a quick look at what Sycor left us with. Uh, what, what does this default value mean? So what I've done is I've run through the spec and uh, I've identified uh, what each one of these means and let's see here it is. So these are our values right? So these are really uh, the purpose, the first uh, up to tell, let's see, telly right here. These are these identify the purpose of the data, uh, the purpose for collecting the data, right? And as we can see here, Sitecore included pretty much everything under the sun. Let's see. Uh, let me let's search for. Let's see admin or develop develop there we go let's go jump up a bit here you go the purpose element so as you can see here's the list of the purpose elements uh, down below towards the end of this uh, web page you'll find the compact representations of this um, of these elements but here closer to the top you'll find the definitions and if we take a look at what we have we have current we have admin develop which is highlighted right here what I was searching for tailored uh, tailoring pseudo analysis pseudo decision individual analysis individual individual decision uh, contact historical uh, even telemarketing um, and do we have other purpose Oh, we don't have other purpose. Information maybe use. Okay, let's see. Just to make sure our. Okay, yeah, that's right. We don't have the other purpose, but we do have all the other categories here. Here's what they mean. Uh, so administrative header right here, or current. Um, so the information, as you can see, may be used by the provider to complete the activity for which it was provided, whether a one-time activity such as returning the results from a web search, forwarding an email message, or placing an order. Admin means the data collected will be used for administrative purposes. Uh, dev for de uh, means the data will be used for development purposes. Tailoring, uh, T-A-I, means the data will be used to tailor the website experience um, to the user. Pseudo, what is a pseudo analysis? Uh, that means that the information uh, or analysis will be performed under a, a unique identifier disconnected from the personal data to the uh, data or um, the information about the visit um, collected by the website. Uh, PSD, pseudo decisions, same thing, but now we can make decisions based on that data. 
uh, individual decisions. Okay, so now individual analysis, individual decisions. So now we're getting to individual uh, level for uh, data collection and we can analyze it and we can make decisions based on it. Uh, contact, let's see, I remember that one. Uh, information may be used to contact the individual through a communications channel. So this says that we can contact you based on that information. Historical, that means we can store your information. Um, archive it and tell means we can use the information collected uh, for telemarketing purposes by default that's pretty permissive so the next one the next compact uh, uh, element tells us that the data um, is ours um, that means only the company, the service provider, or the agents or legal representatives of the company um, can have access to this data now this is why this is important. So if the company is sharing the data or the analytics that they collected on the website um, without changing this header, especially this value right here, they will be in violation um, of their privacy policy. So the next one, IND, stands, uh, identifies timing. So how long we store the data and that stands for indefinite, which is pretty much the best choice there. DSP, that means there are some dispute elements. Although I haven't pursued this further, the dispute element defines or uh, should define the policy for resolving disputes in case of the privacy policy violation. So if the company violates the privacy policy um, or does something that goes against the value specified in P3P header. So this disputes element should, in theory, define um, the steps for dispute resolution. Uh, CAO, the access element. So this identifies um, how much access uh, a website user can have to the personal information collected by the service provider. Uh, so here we have contact and other. So that's pretty permissive. So they can get information about themselves and some other types of information. Um, and then core, um, and then uh, that stands for correct under remedy. So this is the, the element that's responsible for identifying the remedy um, or uh, in other words, what happens or the ac what actions will be taken if the company uh, violates uh, their privacy policy. So there's, uh, this could be even money or law or um, I think there's another value. Um, in our case, it's core, stands for correct, and that means errors or wrongful actions arising for uh, arising in collecting uh, in connection with the privacy policy will be remedied by the service. So the service uh, will basically take care of this, so which is much better than, I'd say, money or law options. Uh, so again, this is uh, uh, probably the best out of the, the ones available. All right, and so here below we see kind of a, the interpretation again of, of what we just looked at. So here you go. So this is the default Sitecore value. However, there are many more. Uh, as you can see, the scroll um, bar on the right is very small and the document is very large. There, is, there are many more settings here and a lot of information that needs to be taken seriously by companies using um, the FXM. Uh, on Sitecore. So there you go. Make sure you check your P23, uh, P3P uh, setting in Sitecore. Uh, if you're a developer, definitely raise that concern, bring it up to the architects and the business. Ultimately, the business would have to make the decision on what goes in there. So make sure to not just drop in the default value. Otherwise, the business might be might get in trouble later. So uh, Hopefully you liked this video. Uh, if you did, go ahead and share it. Uh, give me some thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, for more tips like this, check out cmsbestpractices.com. And I'll see you next Friday. Over and out.